Welcome everybody to Discover Possibility Series, where we like to find possibility and show you guys what is what you're capable of. And today I have a very special guest today who is a speaker, a coach, and an entrepreneur. She is living a life that we all want to live and we all hope to eventually strive towards. At least we all dream about it. Um, I know I have, and I. she was actually a coach of mine for uh, a couple months actually i was introduced to her through her free coaching free coaching program and i ended up you know extending that out for quite a while uh, when i first started out discover ignites and then uh, i was on a brief hiatus and she reached back out to me when i started it back up again and i wanted to bring her on because she has quite an amazing story so without further ado i'd like to introduce you guys to lily ma and Lily Ma, can you let people know who is Lily Ma? Who is Lily Ma? Who is Lily Ma is always changing. That's uh, <laughs> that's what uh, that's what I am. Um, what I do is I currently, so obviously I have shifted gears. Currently, I help people with their spiritual awakening and helping them connect to their soul and their heart, and moving in that direction. So that's what I do right now. Um, from a practical standpoint, I coach people with their businesses, but in a very different kind of way, something that is more aligned with spirituality. So that's how I would describe myself currently, but I'm always changing. Now, can you, now your story, I did talk about uh, living the dream. Now I know, you know, I've watched some of the previous videos you've had out there and I know you come from corporate you know, coming from the corporate side of the house and you jumped into entrepreneurship, right? You didn't really have any kind of um, idea of entrepreneurship or anything like that when you first started? No, I didn't. Um, so I had a very traditional upbringing in a sense that I valued success based on what other people thought success was. So I went to college, I graduated with high honors, I got a job before my graduation ceremony I climbed up the corporate ladder really fast. I made a lot of money. I bought real estate. I bought my own place when I was 21. I had a lot of savings. I got married. I had the beautiful house with a huge acre of land and everything. So I succeeded, succeeded in the traditional sense really early on in my life, which is actually a blessing because once I went through that, I realized that this is not what I want. This is what somebody else wants. So I got the love and the validation from living a pretty traditional life. And one day, actually not one day, many days. So you know how we all have this inner voice that speaks to us? You're sitting at your desk at work or you know, you're just going for a walk. It's like, what if I just quit my job? Yeah, or like, I definitely know that feeling. <laughs> you're just walking, you're like, what if I just move to a different country? And not many people honor that voice, whereas I did. So I did quit my job. I did end up starting a business. Um, I had help at the time because I had a mentor, uh, which is how we met in the first place. And, um, and that's how it all began. So coming to that point, right? Like what you did have the mentors that did help, but, uh, what made you really decide? Was it having that mentor to be able to kind of have that footing before you made that leap or yeah, um, what made you ultimately at the time, overcome was, the fear? Yeah, at the time it was very helpful um, because mm -hmm. uh, it is a big leap, which is, which is why we all need to um, connect with people who are living the life that you want or close to what you want. Obviously we are all quite different. Um, cause I know this, this, um, live thing is called discover possibilities and mm -hmm. look at people who are living the life that you want. And there's so many different ways of living your life. Um, you are not only, you don't only think it's possible, it's actually probable if you follow their steps. So I think it was very helpful in the beginning to have a mentor because I did not have anybody in my friendship circle, social circle that did not have a regular corporate job. He was the only entrepreneur that I knew. So it was very helpful in the beginning to have that. Very nice. And then from that point, now you've 
you were living up in Canada at that point, correct? And then you decided to pack your bags and to travel across the world? Yeah, yeah, same thing, same boys. What if you same boys. But this time, I mean, you, you didn't have particularly a, a step, right? It was more, um, it was kind of out on your own at this point, wasn't it? Yes, yes, I did completely go on my own. Um, and why did I do that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think there's one philosophy that I have that feels mm. very good for me, and that is everything will be fine. Mm. Everything is ultimately okay. And I think deep down, we all know that. Because, like, you know how many times have you been in a situation or people who are watching? It's like, oh, all this crap is going on in my life. But deep down, I know everything is going to be okay. And I think I really connect to the deep down more often now than ever before. Um, because when you're making changes in your life, um, you just have to let yourself know that it's going to be okay. Um, one of the things that has really helped me with my fear is because a lot of people, when they, when they make a leap of faith, it's not that they're afraid that they're going to go broke. Right, maybe they are afraid that they're gonna go broke, but underneath it all, they're like, I'm gonna starve, I'm gonna die. I'm going to, you know, all of these things are gonna happen. So <laughs> this is actually a really weird thing that I, I did um, to challenge my own body. I go on extended fast. Okay. So I'm on, on 72 hour water only fast. And oh. you quickly realize that you're not gonna die if you don't eat for three days. And when you start to see how capable your body is in, in being resilient to certain things, your the fear of starving to death actually goes away. Because I think a lot of people are afraid, if I don't have money, I'm not gonna have anywhere, I, I can't, you know, I won't be able to eat. No, your body can, can fast for long periods of time. Anyways, I'm not a medical professional, I'm not gonna recommend that to anybody. But <laughs> the thing that I do to, to teach myself, to give myself the evidence that no matter what happens, I will be okay. Yeah, I've, I've tried fasting for a while. I think the longest I've gone is 48 hours myself. And I've noticed you do have that that awakening and realizing, you know, you get that all these heightened different senses and stuff like that. And you feel really connected with yourself when you when you do the fasting. Uh, it's been a while since I've done that, but I have I've definitely I did it for quite a bit for quite a while. Um, now, for those people out there, like you said, they, they're trying to struggle, they're trying to come up with this. I know like for myself, right? Like you, if you're trying to get to that point and take that leap, uh, what are some things to, to get there? What is, I know it's more than just, just leap, right? Because <laughs> for me, it's like, you want to leap, you want to jump, but you don't know quite how to get there. Um, yeah. And following that intuition, um, so you, like with the fasting, you tend to like use uh, smaller uh, things to help you kind of trust yourself in that process and, and build that confidence up to be able to do uh, take bigger actions like that. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, the fasting thing is like it's something I do every single day. I do intermittent fasting. But um, to mm -hmm. answer your question, obviously, you know, it's not that I don't do anything on a daily basis. And one day I'm like, I'm just going to move to a different country. Obviously, but, you know, I mean, you could, but <laughs> yeah, okay. um, yeah. and sometimes people hit rock bottoms, and that's where mm -hmm. they're kind of they they have this spiritual awakening. They end up um, doing amazing things. Uh, for me, is I I take care of my rituals every single day. So every day, mm -hmm. what I do is I have certain practices to open up my decision space. Okay, so I'll explain what decision space is. We all have the free will to choose whatever we want to do in life. But if your decision space is really narrow, so I'm going to use an extreme example. So someone who is suicidal, they have a very narrow decision space. They could only see that the only option I have is to leave this world, which is a really sad thing. Um, you have to go through a lot in order to get to that place. Um, so that's an extreme case for me is every single day I open up my possibilities. So that way, when I think about doing something like moving to a different country, 
the first initial reaction is like, oh, that's so exciting. And then the second in reaction would be like, what about this? What about that? And and then your decision space gets really narrow. You're like, I can't make this decision because it's either this or that. Meanwhile, there are 500,000 other things in between. So that's what I do. And how do I do that is this. I train my mind. So I will do something different every single day. I go for a wealth walk around the property mm-hmm. and I just see abundance and everything. Sometimes I'll walk backwards. Sometimes I'll change up the route. Sometimes I will um, go to a different location. Sometimes I will work somewhere else. So that way what I'm doing is I'm actually expanding the decision space. So I see more possibilities and probabilities. So that's a very good way for people to start training their mind to see that they have so many options. It's not either you quit your job and starve or You don't quit your job. There are 500 things underneath. What if you didn't quit your job and you did a little side hustle? What if you contacted this person? Or what if you did that? Oh, you don't have a lot of money? Okay, maybe you have certain skills that you could make money from while you're building a business. Um, There's so many things. What if you did start a business and that didn't work? That's okay. You could get another job back. There's so many options that people have, right? I think when we become very narrow in, in our choices, it's this or that, that's when people get paralyzed. But there are so many things in between you can do. Yeah, I, def- I definitely talk about that a lot, just being um, is finding perspective and and realizing um, I know even like with me, I talk a lot about like plant based and stuff like that and hitting rock bottom. It gives you new perspective and you see those other opportunities out there because of that um, and seeking, like you said, going on different routes and stuff like that, whatever it is, whether that's a book or a documentary or something like that, just to try to give you new perspective. And I think a lot of people do. Uh, get locked in that that space where they they don't see anything and uh, come from a scarcity mindset. So that's definitely something I see there. Now, um, as far as intuition, you talk about following your heart. Now, can you tell me what the difference between intuition and following your heart is, or are they both one and the same? Um, they, I see it as the same, but I do know what you're trying to, uh, I do know what you're implying here. Sometimes people mm-hmm. would say, follow your gut, right? Follow mm-hmm. your, I don't recommend doing that all the time. It's because when you haven't done uh, your, haven't done the work in clearing out your channel, uh, there's a lot of um, debris that's there. So you may, you may have a lot of fear in your body. You may have a lot of addictions in your body and impulses. So sometimes when you say follow your gut, people will be like, well, my gut says that I need to get that cookie or something because that's an addictive place. That's your impulse versus your heart is a much wiser place to come from. It's actually uh, seeing things from an observation perspective. So I have an exercise that I do every single day, which actually puts me in a heart brain coherence. And that's when you tap into the wisdom of the heart. And when you do this exercise, I do it every single morning. And when I do it, it actually lasts for six hours. And this is something that people can look up on the Heart Mass Institute. So it's called Heart Mass Institute, I think. I'll give you the link and then you can link it for people to see. There's a lot of scientific research that has been done about the power of following the heart and power of the heart. And there are actual exercises that you can do for it. So that's what I mean by following the heart. If you want, I could quickly go over the exercise. Um, uh, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, so what you do is, it's really quick. You just, first is bringing focus to your heart. So you just simply put your hand on your heart and you bring the focus there and attention there. And then after that, you close your eyes and you take a couple of deep conscious breaths. And the reason why it's important to take these deep, long conscious breaths is because it signals to the body that you're safe. A lot of the times we're making decisions out of fear, out of lack, Mm -hmm. feeling like, you know, we need to do this. Otherwise, we're not enough. Like there's so many things that go on. But when you when you signal to your body that you are safe, then now you're making a decision from a place of creativity, from a place of abundance, from a place of love. And then the last part is tapping into gratitude and appreciation. So thinking about all the things that you're grateful for, you're appreciative of. And if you want, you can bring a question or in an intention to the meditation. And this could be as long as you want or as short as you want. Um, so you could say, what's my next step? 
and now you're making a decision from the heart that is connected to your mind because it's important to have that alignment because sometimes if we're following like you were saying you like is intuition or heart the same sometimes it's just impulse like just mm -hmm. do this um, but it could be from coming from a fear place right mm -hmm. now as far as perhaps there's people out there that might have um limited time throughout their day right like uh, you have people that are busy that may have family <laughs> I'm but, joking. Uh, I love those people. I work with those people, so I know. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, but, you know, they have this, this crazy hectic schedule, and they they may want to know, well, how much time do I got to dedicate towards this thing, uh, right, to, to find that intuition, to start following my heart? Uh, how, how much time do you think a person should dedicate um, to doing that every day? I know it should be a daily ritual, but um, for myself, right, like I know – uh, the, the longer I do it, I know it helps me out, but some people may not have that opportunity. Um, I guess just from my perspective, like, is there is there a, a good way? Should there be a lot, a lot of time that should be doing this? Should it be like 30 minutes an hour? I know for myself, I, I find it's always better if the longer I can go, but. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I, I spend a lot of time doing my rituals, but for this one, it's like five five minutes, seven minutes, five to seven mm -hmm. minutes will be decent. Um, and I totally get what people are doing. You know, I, I, have a social, I haven't always been like this. There was a time I was one of those people. I'm like, I don't want to right now. You know, time is money. And yeah. um, I started <laughs> off with a 30 second meditation because oh, yeah. Because as I was very anxious. I was working the corporate world, obviously, and I was—I had ulcers, I had anxiety, I was on pills, and all sorts of things. And this woman at my work, she's like, "Well, you know, I do this mindfulness thing." I was like, "I don't have time for that. I, don't. <laughs> I have a busy life." Um, and she says, "Can you afford thirty seconds?" I'm like, "Fine, thirty seconds will work." And that's how my journey began. So I—I I can totally relate. Thirty seconds is how my journey began. So if you can only have thirty seconds, do thirty seconds. Yeah, I know. Definitely for me, when I started doing uh, meditation, it was um, right before I got a divorce. I mean, there are many times beforehand I tried to do it in the same boat. You know, I uh, was <laughs> struggling to make uh, just a couple of minutes. It felt like I could be doing something better with my time, uh, and then I dedicated that time. I think I dedicated uh, like six months. So I was like, no matter what's going to happen every day, I'm going to do five minutes. Um, it took a lot of time. I was, it was the same. I, I think I did Headspace was my first one. Is that what you, the one you said you were using from um, the beginning? I, insight. Insight. Yeah, insight. Timer. I have done Headspace before, um, but I don't, that's how I started was Insight Timer. Yeah. I think the, this was like so many years ago. I don't think Headspace was even Long yeah, no, I know. I use that just as, as like a starting ground, and then I, I think it's it's a good like uh, lead way into other things, and it kind of led me into other books, uh, like Dr. George Dispenza and stuff. I started getting on his stuff, and um, doing more stuff on my own as a as opposed to some of the guided meditation stuff or an app per se. Um, then I started getting into some of his uh, audio guided meditations as well. Uh, which I do find uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza was always was always a good uh, meditation. At least that's why I found the best for me. Uh, as far as my like my spiritual uh, side right now, like mine has been, it's still Dr. Joe Dispenza, but it's more like the, the 15 minute one, the more visualization one, as opposed to the, I know we had talked about the water one, <laughs> going through the water levels, and imagining the water going over your head and stuff. Uh, that one was intriguing, actually. Uh, enjoyed that one i was a little bit longer but for those people out there that may not have a lot of time um what what do you would say um so we did the the five minutes right we we've come over the time uh let me see if i got i do have some extra questions i would like to hit you up with uh what is the biggest thing that you think holds people back from from going out and uh, trying to achieve those things that they want? 
they just seem to hold people back. Uh, it's a uh, it's a fear of like I'm talking more for my clients because my clients live a, like a lot of the clients that I work with have families mm-hmm. and children. Um, so the thing that holds them back the most is feeling like their family can't rely on them. So when you take a leap of faith, there is a a um, interim that things may not exactly be the way you expect it to be. So their biggest fear is that they're not going to be reliable anymore to the people mm-hmm. that they love. So they don't want to take away that security. So that's why I've seen, I can't say for the rest of the world, <laughs> I'm only yeah. saying it for the people that I work with very closely. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I find that to be very true as far as um, always having that, you look for the security, although, you know, jobs in itself isn't as secure as a lot of people like to think. Um, I think it's 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 good in, to, for people to go out and explore and have that, that side gig or creating that other business on the side, especially during times like this. I think it, it's extremely important. But uh, the next question I have is uh, worst advice you've ever received. <laughs> Not even something that I think about. Um, I think in general, it's like do it exactly like I do it. Yes. I think, yeah, <laughs> that's like probably the worst advice because even me, when I work with my clients, I don't expect people to just take my word for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, try it for yourself. See if it works. We're different people. Um, so I think maybe that's it. I'll just leave it there. Yeah, I know that's something I talk about a lot too, is uh, there's a lot of people expect, you know, steps one through five to work correctly. And then, you know, you find a step two, it's not working. Like they say, it's work. It's supposed to work, right? And so I always tell people to try to, to tweak it to, um, to who they are, their unique yeah. side. And so exactly. I find that, yeah, because... That's definitely what I found out, and I've definitely been trying to to push other people to do as well, is to yeah. not just take it for what it is. Um, so, uh, that, to the point of the, what you're saying, it's kind of being the open-minded skeptic, which is kind of like an interesting term. It's like mm-hmm. still be open-minded because you're because look- some people are just closed-minded; they just refuse. Like, no, it's yeah, completely shaking my belief system, so I'm not going to adopt certain mindset um, things that you're teaching, Marcus. But mm-hmm. having an open mind, like maybe this works, but also be skeptical, like using your own discernment. So I think it's it's a fine balance in a dance that people have to do. Yeah. And again, yeah, like you said, it's, it's perspective. If people need a perspective change and sometimes, you know, life will give you that. Sometimes, you know, you can go out and again, seek it. But yeah. um, definitely, I think uh, life, you're going to get it from life either way, whether you, whether you want it or not. <laughs> but, uh, um, and then one of the last questions I have here is one thing uh, you want people to take away from this interview. Um, is to realize what they are. So in my opinion, what we are is a transmitter and a receiver of energy. That's what we are. And I think we focus very much of who we are. Like there's so many different books about us. Like, who are you? Who you know? But who are you is always changing, right? Who I was at one point was a seven-year-old child, and I'm totally different from that. Who I was was a corporate worker, but my belief system has changed, and now I'm a very free-flowing, freedom-seeking entrepreneur. But what I am has never changed. That is, I am connected to divine energy. Obviously, you know, for religious folks, they talk about God. Some people call it the creator, but that's what we are. Uh, every human being has the po- has the ability and the capability to be a receiver and transmitter of energy. And when we tap into that, we realize that everything is possible because what's available to me is also available to, you know, Dr. Joe that we were talking about, Dr. Joe Dispenza, to Mahatma Gandhi, to you know, all these leaders of the world, where all this, what we are is the same. Who we are is always changing. And that's totally moldable and possible 
and you could do anything that you want. It's not only possible, it's probable because you have seen other people do it. So that's what I want to, I want everybody to take that away. Remember what you are. Well, that is fantastic and a good way to close this out. Mm -hmm. Lily, I would like to thank you very much for coming on the channel and, and giving your story, giving your perspective on everything and providing people guidance on how to achieve that, right? And to, to change their lives. Yeah. And so it, how can people reach out and, and get a hold of you? Uh, I'm on Instagram and on YouTube under Lily Ma. And um, I also have a um, coaching program that people can reach out to me as well. I work with very specific people. So there are certain questions that you have to answer before we go through the process. So I will, I will give you all the links and then you could share that with people as well. Yes, definitely. I'll leave all her information down in the description below. Lily, thank you again so much for coming on. Thank you guys for watching. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Thank you.